What we're going to look at now is the birch reduction of an aromatic ring. Now, you could do this with substituted aromatic rings too, but if you do have a substituent, you cannot reduce the site where there is a substituent. I'm going to show this with benzene. I have found that it helps to draw out the bonds so you can actually see where all of the bonds are. So draw all of your carbon-hydrogen bonds. It will help. This reaction is very similar to the reaction that involves sodium and ammonia with an alkyne going to a transalkene. It's basically the same mechanism. You are reducing a pi bond to sigma bond. And the electrons are trying to get as far away from each other as possible. So if you need help, go back and look at that one to see how they're similar. In this case, again, you are dealing with sodium metal. It has its electron. And so I'm going to redraw this aromatic ring in such a way that you can see the p orbitals on the next slide. So I like to see those p orbitals. It, it tends to help a lot when you're trying to see what's going on. And again, remember orbitals can have none, one, or two electrons in them at any given time. So all of these carbons in this ring have a p orbital. And all of these p orbitals have a single electron in them, and they're totally delocalized so that you have this conjugated pi system. But every one of them has an electron. And then sodium comes along, and it doesn't care which of these um, orbitals gets its electron, but somebody gets the electron, okay? And it binds up with it. As a result of binding up with it, and I'm going to draw it down here as well, you have disrupted the conjugated pi system. And you're now going to have a radical that is resonance stabilized. So if I had, again, showing the same thing, sodium coming in here, the other one has to go and hang off by itself. Um, you're going to create a system where one of these p orbitals is no longer a p orbital, it becomes an sp3 hybrid orbital, but it has this pair of electrons in it. The other electron from what was a pi bond is going to be delocalized on this ring by resonance. Now, the predominant resonance structure is the one where that radical is as far away as possible from the lone pair. So this is the radical anion species. They want to get as far away from each other as possible. But there would be some electron density here and here as well through resonance of the radical. I'm just not going to draw those locations in. At this point in time, since this is an sp3 hybrid orbital, this is an extremely basic position because it's the conjugate base of an alkane. And the solvent here can be either an alcohol or ammonia. You can use either one but they're going to actually be your acid source. I know ammonia is not typically an acid, but in this case, this is that strong of a base. It is going to remove one of these hydrogens, and you're going to give electrons back to the nitrogen, which will result in just having a radical. Okay, now this has become sp3 hybridized down here as a result of that reduction. That's why I tell you drawing in the hydrogens helps. You can see how many bonds each of these carbons has. Now, because it's still a radical, it needs another electron in this orbital. So another sodium will be very willing to give up its electron. And we'll make another anion. And since it is the conjugate base of an alkane, it is extremely basic. So another solvent molecule, be that ammonia or an alcohol, will act as the acid source and the proton donor. This pair of electrons will pick up that proton. You'll give electrons back to the nitrogen. 
And as a result of that, you will make the isolated dying that we were after. And it will always result in this isolated dying. The hydrogens will add in such a way that they try to get as far away from each other as possible, just like we did with the alkyne going to the transalkene.